Hey everyone, welcome back to Windows Sage Studies. I hope you all are doing well. So we have been learning about histone modifications in which we learned about histone methylation, histone acetylation as well as histone phosphorylation. Today we are going to learn about histone ubiquitination. So histone ubiquitination, in this histone modification we add a ubiquitin a moiety and so ubiquitin is 76 amino acid long polypeptide just like in histone acetylation we add acetyl group in histone methylation we add methyl group in, in histone phosphorylation we add a uh, phosphate group but in histone ubiquitination we add ubiquitin group so this is a very large covalent modification because um, unlike methyl or acetyl group which are very small ubiquitin is very large uh, moiety right it's 76 amino acid log polypeptide so this is uh, this is ubiquitination is a large covalent modification so unlike other modification histone ubiquitination the addition of uh, ubiquitin group and this is enzymatically added on almost all sorts of proteins so like histone methylation is only done on histone but alongside histone ubiquitin group can be added on uh, almost all sorts of protein and in that uh, context normally ubiquitination of any protein is kind of a tag for that protein that it is damaged so the uh, uh, ubiquitination is used for tagging the damaged proteins and those uh, damaged proteins they are destined to degradation only those proteins are tagged by the ubiquitin but in the uh, epigenetic context histone ubiquitination is uh, quite important because it has it shows diverse uh, epigenetic control so we are going to learn in detail about histone ubiquitination today so ubiquitin group it is a polypeptide and it is enzymatically added on the histone so the enzymes which are which add ubiquitin are known as ubiquitin ligases e3 uh, ligases okay so we are not going to learn about the enzymes uh, uh, which add ubiquitin group in detail in this uh, lecture in epigenetic series we will learn about that in maybe molecular biology series or some else series but today's topic of focus is how ubiquitination has uh, it uh, exhibit the epigenetic control so the addition of ubiquitin on the um, histone is done on the target sites uh, are uh, of obviously it's lysine but it is done on h2a 119th lysine as well as it is done on h2b 120th lysine okay so these are the uh, lysine residues on which the uh, ubiquitination is done so those lysine residue those are those can only be mono ubiquitinylated okay only one ubiquitin group can be added on the histones the, there's no dye or tri ubiquitinylation so these are both of those uh, uh, modifications they are uh, antagonistic to each other so we will learn about h2b uh, ubiquitination first okay so in uh, on this ubiquitination this is an active mark how because it is a prerequisite okay yeah. is a prerequisite for H3K4 methylation as well as H3K79 methylation okay but uh, not not monomethylation di or trimethylation okay not for monomethylation uh, but the uh, uh, di or trimethylation of H3K4 residue as well as H3K79 residue for this to happen uh, it uh, the h2b line 120th lysine residue should be ubiquitin annihilated so it is it serves as a prerequisite for this uh, for those marks and we already know that those marks and are active marks okay and that is why the ubiquitination of h2b uh, k120 is uh, an active mark it leads to the activation of gene this is one reason but the other reason for um, for it be it uh, being an active mark is that it provides a passage
for uh, RNA polymerase 2. So like uh, the Pol2 is going to transcribe, uh, transcribe the genes and it uh, in the nucleosomal structure, in the nucleosomal template, it provides a passage for RNA polymerase to go and bind to the DNA. So now RNA polymerase can act as a reading machinery of the DNA and now it can transcribe the DNA. So these are, these are the two reasons by which H2B uh, K120 ubiquitin annihilation is an active mark. And yeah, I uh, mentioned that there's only mono ubiquitination possible in the histones. But antagonistically, H2A119 uh, ubiquitination is kind of an repressive mark. Why? Because this ubiquitination is added by uh, the E3 ligase, the two kind of E3 ligase. One is ring 1B, this is an enzyme, and other one is 2A HUB. Okay. So the ring 1B, this enzyme is the subunit or it is a part of the P. PRC1 complex, okay, and I hope you remember that in H3K27 methylation, we learned that the PRC complex, the polycom repressive complex, it consists of the polycom group of proteins, and those complexes, these are they are related to the silencing of gene, and of this complex, the ring ring 1B is a part, and it uh, ubiquitin annihilates the H2AK119 uh, residue, and that is why this is this is related to the repression of the gene. Okay, so H, uh, the, so those uh, are the antagonistic marks. H two B K one twenty methylation is an active mark, while H two A K one one nine mono ubiquitination is a repressive mark, and it is it can be added by the two different enzymes, ring one B or two A H U B. So this is it in the uh, ubiquitination part. So ubiquitination, which generally is associated with the protein degradation, or uh, it is a kind of tag for damaged protein. But in histones, it is very important because it exhibits uh, exhibit a different kind of epigenetic uh, role. So this is why because you know active mark being a prerequisite for active mark it is a very uh, distinct uh, characteristic of ubiquitination, which is which was not normal known to uh, researchers at first so the thing that the um, uh, uh, h2b okay yeah i forgot to add one thing here that uh, h2a k119 mono ubiquitination is uh, done by ring 1b uh, ring 1 uh, 1b enzyme which is a part of prc1 complex but alongside it that uh, it is it is also established that this h2a k119 ubiquitination this is very important or it is very crucial for binding of H1 and I, I hope that you remember that if you remember that H1 is a linker histone okay this is a linker histone. So this histone is very crucial for DNA packaging uh, after it uh, like it uh, is important for connection of two nucleosomes so this that is why we call it as a linker histone so in the nucleosome we have an octamer okay so this is an octamer and I, i've drawn it in 3d try to imagine and octamer and so it is consisted it it consists of the eight subunits around which dna is wrapped okay this, this is the dna which is wrapped around this uh, octamer so on this the linker histone okay this links the two uh, co consecutive nucleosomes so this is very important for dna packaging due to the binding of h1 the dna packaging in, in, is enhanced in the chromatin and uh, so for compaction of chromatin h1 plays a very important role and this binding of h1 to the dna is enhanced by this ubiquitination so this was established when uh, scientists tried uh, they they you know they isolated the mononucleosomes of the uh, uh, in which the mononucleosomes in which in which h2a 119th residue this was mutated okay so instead of the uh, lysine residue there was something else so those uh, mutated nucleosomes when they isolated those nucle mononucleosomes they saw that uh, the, this mononucleosome this lacks h1 
protein okay so the lacking of h1 protein this uh, showed that the uh, the H2A 119th residue is quite important for binding of H1 uh, ubiquitination and the epigenetic mark which is added on this residue is the ubiquitination okay so that this was established that the ubiquitination uh, of the 119th residue on the H2A protein is very important very crucial for the H1 uh, binding and that is why that this is again other uh, other reason that the H2A 119th uh, ubiquitination, this is an repressive mark. Why? Because the compaction of chromatin, it is, it is, it facilitates or it is related to the repression of genes. So, due to the compaction of chromatin, the DNA becomes less accessible and the DNA reading machinery can't read the DNA and that is why it leads to the, to the silencing of gene. And this is how, these are the two reasons uh, why the, this ubiquitination, this mark is an repressive mark. Why? Because first that it is done by the complex, which is a part of the repressive complex. Okay. It is done by the enzyme, which is part of repressive complex and that is why this is a repressive as well as it enhances the DNA packaging. The other uh, and, and the, while the antagonistic to it, the H2B K120 methylation is an active mark. So these these are the two principal sites for ubiquitination, and this is how uh, they uh, are different from each other. And instead of the being a tag of um, of the damaged protein, histone ubiquitination is quite important in the epigenetics. So this is the, this was uh, all about ubiquitination. So here we end the lecture about ubiquitination. In next lecture, we will learn about a different kind of histone modification, and that is histone uh, uh, histone tail clipping. So this is it for now. Till then, see you. Bye bye.